Yes, if you, uh, you have the first slide up, I, I believe. Um, we can skip over this one. That's the uh, forward-looking statement. <laughs> um, what we're seeing in the, um, in the market is that, uh, like before with the uh, computer industry, uh, if you look at the 1970s, people were moving um, from using a mainframe computer to uh, processing at the edge in that uh, we had a processor in our laptops and, and, and computers and de desktops, et cetera. That same process is uh, happening in artificial intelligence. At the moment, you see people using uh, large data centers, uh, things like Alexa, they upload everything up to the large data center where it is then processed and the uh, results are sent back to, uh, to, the, to the device. Uh, that's causing uh, bandwidth problems with millions of units. Uh, we see that the number of units will increase very rapidly over the next five years. So they move data centers uh, closer to the edge. These are still, uh, while the uh, central data center uh, burned uh, billions of watts, the edge data centers uh, are still using millions of watts. Um, the next step was to move uh, edge, go to the edge of the cloud. So devices that process and upload things to the cloud in a more uh, decent manner. And what we are seeing now is that people are moving farther from the uh, from the from the uh, from the cloud. And what we what we are aiming at is the Akita chip is a uh, is the advanced far edge where uh, and the connection to the internet is not necessary at all. Um, Beneficial AI is, a, is an important uh, part of our, of our machine, mission. Uh, the um, machines we are looking at is like medical uh, applications, uh, breath uh, analyzers for, for COVID, for instance, um, sensory um, perception of, of, of all kinds. Um, and um, we can do this at a very high speed and at extremely low power consumptions. So next slide, please. We see that the number of uh, uh, connections that uh, are uh, making use of, of the internet, if you project forward what is happening today in, in 2021, uh, you see that there is uh, um, uh, about 11 billion um, devices connected to the internet and uh, 23 billion uh, or 10 billion um, uh, individual users. Now, you see an escalation of that in the, in the next five years, that um, over 40 billion connections to the internet uh, will cause uh, bandwidth problems that uh, can be averted by using the Akita chip. The Akita chip does all the processing on the device, on the edge, uh, doesn't need an internet connection, runs at low power, and is extremely small and light. So we go to the next slide, please. So we currently have the, uh, the Akita chip in production. Uh, the first uh, production chips will, um, will ar arrive uh, in, at the end of August and uh, will be delivered to customers uh, by the end of this year. The, um, we have four paths to revenue. Uh, that's, uh, the first one is to uh, sell IP. We have one IP license at the moment where IP is delivered as a, as a black box it is encrypted, it's dropped onto a customer's uh, uh, chip and they connect it up to that bus and they can use it as if it's a, if it's a chip. And the second path is, the, is of course chip sales. Uh, we also do module sales, which is where we're expecting our first revenue. And the, uh, the fourth path to revenue is the, uh, the re um, royalties we are receiving after an uh, IP sale. So after uh, the uh, customer has integrated the IP on their own chip, they will um, have to go through a period of, of development and testing. And once they integrate the product, in, in you know, release the product and start manufacturing the product, they will, um, they will start paying royalties to, uh, to BrainChip. So there's other products that we, uh, we see that uh, BrainChip is uh, going to be used in is for instance in, uh, in cars, um, not only in, in self-driving cars, but also to improve the, uh, the driver experience, looking back at the driver, for instance, to uh, identify the driver, to also um, um, adjust the uh, environment of the car to the driver's uh, preferences, and to see if the driver is authorized to drive this car. 
we can also look uh, listen to the engine and uh, give the driver feedback on on preventative maintenance. Self-driving cars, of course, we do a project with with lidar to um, uh, identify uh, objects in three D space. Uh, Home appliances, very important market. We envision, for instance, a, a fridge that has, is equipped with Akira to do the uh, analysis. And um, the uh, an, an, uh, auto sensor that would be able to detect if any food is, is off in the fridge and what it is. Uh, electronic doorbells, there is really thousands of applications. Next slide, please. So if we're looking at the overview of, um, of the competitive market, the, um, the brain chip Akita 1000 is, the, is our current chip. The um, other two chips in the uh, same sort of uh, technology space are the IBM True North chip. The IBM True North chip is huge. It's um, far larger than, than, uh, than the uh, uh, Akita chip. It uh, sports a million neurons. We sport 1.2 million neurons. The um, True North chip does not have on-chip learning. It is not compatible with the, with the uh, standard sort of uh, programming language that everybody is using or programming environment, which is TensorFlow and, and Python. Uh, you have to learn a new language to use the uh, True North chip. It cannot stand alone because it does not have a, a processing core and it does not have uh, on-chip convolution, which means that uh, existing CNN networks that people have already invested money in cannot run on the IBM True North, but can run on the Akita chip. And we have proven that. So the um, Intel Low E chip is also in the same space. It's also a neuromorphic chip. Their on chip learning um, capability is programmable. So you have to write your own program to get it to learn. The um, environment is the neural engineering framework, which is a um, Again, a new new environment, a new a new language to learn. It doesn't do standalone and doesn't have on-chip uh, convolution. So then there is a whole range of other um, uh, what what you would call coprocessors, uh, such as the Carl TPU and the uh, NVIDIA chip. Uh, all these are all what I would uh, class together as as deep learning accelerators. The deep learning accelerators are compatible with TensorFlow because TensorFlow was designed for these things. But um, they are burning up to a thousand times more power than, uh, than the Akita chip. They are math chips, which means that they only accelerate the math for a neural network. So your neural network still runs on your C CPU. And um, they do not have a standalone. They need to work with a CPU and there is no convolution. You need to run convolution on your CPU. So the only chip that it is checking all the boxes for edge devices is the uh, Akita, Akita 1000 chip, which uh, we will be releasing very soon. We already have done um, engineering samples. So the design of the chip is, is largely de-risked. The um, engineering samples work very well. So uh, that's why we moved forward into production. The next uh, slide, please. So I, I touched a little bit on, on the, on the uh, applications. Uh, security is an obvious one. Not only uh, can we build this technology into cameras and then the cameras don't need to transmit images back to the uh, uh, large computer. All they need to transmit is whether a security breach has, has occurred. All the processing is done on, on Akita. Person recognition uh, is something we do very well. In healthcare, we have done a project with the company in Israel. Um, they make a sensor for uh, different types of cancer, as well as uh, COVID-19. They uh, have shipped us the data sets of um, clinical trials they have done. Uh, we have been able to identify COVID-19, for instance, with a, um, an accuracy of, of um, mid-90s, about 95%, which is better than the PCR test. From uh, And we... This is a test that is uh, just needing a needs a, a sample of, of uh, exhaled breath. Smart cities, for instance, pollution. Um, looking at uh, the levels of not only levels of pollution but also what type of pollution, so we can classify the different chemicals that are in the air uh, in manufacturing, uh, aut autonomous machines, and of course in automotive, which I already talked about. Next slide, please. 
So if we explode these things, you um, you see that, uh, for instance, in in healthcare, you see that uh, diagnosis, uh, virtual nurses, where patients are being monitored all the time, but also fraud detection, um, uh, vibration analysis, for instance, or bearings. There is really, really thousands of, of applications where devices are not just smart, but intelligent. Next slide, please. If we're looking at the market size for this type of technology, uh, this chart is a little bit skewed because the uh, researchers looked at the current situation and projected that forward. And of course, we are going to uh, cause um, a shift in these in these uh, colors or in these bars, but not the not the size of the bars. So, if we're looking at a sixty billion dollar market in twenty twenty five, I believe that is correct. We are uh, aiming to get a uh, a significant part of that market with uh, the Akita one thousand and also the next generations of of Akita. Uh, next slide, please. So here we uh, are against the background of a uh, of a large data center. Uh, the Akita chip is doing the, the same job uh, in, in edge devices, uh, but at the extremely low power consumption, as low as 100 microwatts, which means that you can run off a small uh, pen light battery for five months. Um, we have on-chip very fast learning, so you can just show it to an, an animal, for instance, a uh, toy animal, and put it in front of the camera and will recognize that that toy animal, then also in the in the wild. We have on-chip convolution, which means we're compatible with existing networks and also compatible with TensorFlow. We have low, very low heat generation because the chip is running on very low power and uh, it's small and lightweight, which is important in uh, spacecraft and aircraft, airborne uh, equipment. Next slide, please. Recently, uh, the we have been added to the ASX 300 index, but also we did an upgrade to our US listing on the OTC. We are now listed at the highest level, which is the QX listing. We are uh, currently searching for a, a new CEO, a CEO who is a, a superstar, somebody who is coming from a, a large organization who has experience in building a company from where we are today. Uh, at this pivot point where we are moving from research and development now into production and sales. So we're currently reviewing a short list of candidates and that is going very well. Uh, we're also opening the door to institutional investors. And I just finished a, uh, a roadshow in Sydney and uh, by Zoom on, in Melbourne uh, to, uh, to get in institution in interested in the, uh, in the uh, brain chip technology. We also appointed a new investor relations, which uh, will result in better investor uh, investor uh, relations coverage in the near future, or in at present. <laughs> okay, we go to the next slide, please. That was my presentation. I did it in uh, seven minutes. That's <laughs> that's great, Per, because we have a lot of questions. Oh, good. Um, Someone just asked, you did an institutional roadshow. What, what was their line of questioning for the company? Really, um, they understand the, um, the need for, uh, for a larger institutional uh, uh, participation in, in, our, uh, in our share base. The, um, the, the, the only questions really that came back is the, is the composition of our board because our, our only female member uh, resigned for personal reasons just before the uh, AGM. And uh, they were concerned about um, uh, the diversity of the board. Uh, for the rest, uh, BrainChip is uh, uh, very compliant and very uh, responsive. So there was very few other questions. And, and, and what about the commercial opportunity, the revenue? Where, where, where do you start? I, I would have thought the institutions would ask about that. Well, we have uh, we already have a um, a small uh, revenue this year. Um, we have seen that uh, Renaissance, for instance, have paid up their license. Uh, royalties will flow from that in the in, in, within the co next couple of years when they have their their products ready. We also have a number uh, of uh, early access customers who have our um, um, our engineering sample chips and are experimenting with those chips now to uh, to see how they can design them in in into their uh, into their systems 
uh, we will follow that up with production chips very soon. So we've seen some revenue flowing at the beginning of this year. We um, uh, are expanding our sales team and we also expect to uh, appoint a number of um, uh, design, uh, design partners and solution partners. Uh, some, I have lots of questions here. Um, so Elon, Elon, Musk, uh, Elon Musk recently raised the issue of um, environmental, environmental sustainability in terms of cryptocurrency processing. It uses a lot of energy. Uh, will technology like your chips um, significantly reduce the energy use for these processes? Yes, if you're looking at uh, a data center like uh, AWS, it uses uh, enormous amounts of power. They're very secretive about how much power they're actually using. I've been trolling the internet to see what, what, what sort of figures I can find. They said something about a billion units would use a billion watts. So if you look at the uh, Akita chip running at uh, uh, somewhere between 100 and 100 to 300 uh, uh, 100 microwatt to 300 milliwatt, we would make uh, at an average a 97% savings of energy for the same result. Okay, and 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 so how does your uh, product stack up against a company like Axe and and some of the other um, competitors out there? Yeah, I had a slide there with uh, with the competitors, the main competitors in, in it. The um, um, a lot of people are building chips for data centers. That's where the immediate uh, cash has been in the past five years. In, in the next five years, you see a shift happening from away from the data centers into uh, edge devices, just like it has happened in computers back in the 1970s. That uh, shift is enabled by by the Akita chip. So that's where we're expecting to see a revenue. And there's been a significant uh, shortage of chip manufacturing capacity out of China, particularly in automobiles. Is that, is that affected brain chips ability to deliver? Not at all. Uh, we have an excellent uh, relationship with, uh, with Socionext in Japan. Socionext is the second largest manufacturer of, uh, of chips in the world. It's a uh, for you to, um, so um, the, um, the production slots for, uh, for Akita have been booked. So we do not expect to see any delays in deliveries.